Hi, I'm Mike. I'm going to show you how to export data from one org and import it into another. Let's go ahead and begin. I'm looking right now at my Salesforce org and I've got some data here. If I go back and look at some other candidates, we'll bring up Jim Johnson here. You see I've got these records. They've got uh, just a primary object and then some secondary objects here showing as a related list. What I want to do is I want to extract this data and get it into another org and that's what we're going to work on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop to my command line. I'll be using the command line to you, uh, to invoke some uh, Salesforce DX commands and you do that by entering SFDX into your command line but before we actually do that I want to bring up my text editor and I want to show you that what I've already done is I've compiled a query a SQL query that's going to get exactly what it is that I'm looking for. So if you look here, you'll see that I'm querying for data from the candidate underscore underscore C custom object, but I'm also including a subquery against candidate histories, indicating a relationship here with an underscore underscore R. And the reason I'm doing this instead of doing two separate queries is because I want to make sure that when I do my export, I'm identifying the relationships. That's very important. If you don't identify those relationships, then it doesn't know how to create reference points to generate IDs that link to each other when you import the data into your new org. So take a look at this query and I'll make this available for you to look at in a repository on GitHub. But take a look at this. You want to make sure you understand this. This is the query that you need to write and reference in your export. Okay, so back to my command line. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to invoke the forest data tree export command. But the first thing I'll do is I'll bring up the, the notes so you can see how exactly it works. So I'll type in force data tree export and I'll indicate that I want to get some help. This shows you everything you need to know. It shows you your switches, everything that's necessary for you to, to, to use this tool to the, to the most uh, capacity. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify a query file. So it's going to want to know the location. So I'll be using the dash Q switch. I'm also going to use the dash U switch to indicate that I want to specify a specific org. And, uh, and then we also want to indicate a location for where to dump the data that gets exported. So let's go ahead and begin. Actually, there's one more switch. That's the dash P, a plan. So since I'm generating multiple uh, S object tree files, I want a plan. That plan is going to notate how multiple objects relate to one another. It's important that I mention that because you'll see me type that in. You might not know what that is. So let me go ahead and I'll type in my export command. It's sfdx force data tree export. And I'll say let's go ahead and we will make reference to my query file, which I've got here. This is the file that I was just showing you. And what did I call that? I called it candidate SQL. We'll indicate that we're going to pull this from the org that I have called data test. And then we'll use that important dash P switch that says, hey, look, we're pulling a couple of objects here that relate to each other. So let's make sure that we indicate a plan that defines how those relationships all work. And then we'll say, let's go ahead and dump this data. We'll put it, we'll put it here in a directory called data. So I'll do that. It's going to sit there and think about it. And then it's going to tell me, I wrote four records to the candidate output. I, I wrote 11 records to the candidate history. I didn't write any records to the candidate uh, in candidate history plan, but that file does exist. Let's go ahead and we'll take a look at that now. Okay, the first thing I'll do is I'll open up the candidate file. This shows me everything I need to know about the candidate records that I've got. You'll see I have a reference ID instead of an actual ID, and that's important. I'll bring up candidate history. Same deal, it shows you all the records. And you'll see it's referencing a reference ID instead of an actual Salesforce ID. And that has to do with this plan file. The plan says, hey, look, resolve all of these relationships by looking in their respective files. That's what that's all about. So let's go ahead. We'll go to the command line. We'll create an org that we can put all of this data in. And then we'll import the data and have a look at it. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a scratch org. Hopefully I don't stumble over this command. Uh, I, I don't do this too often. I do this once per project, so I might stumble here. So we're going to do sfdx. We're going to say force org create. We're going to specify our configuration. We are going to give it a name of dev, I'm sorry, data test. We'll say data test in. And we will indicate the name of my dev hub. And I think that should be it. Let's go ahead and give it a try. It'll sit here and think about it for a moment. And if everything is working just fine, then we'll see a notation here in the command line. Okay, and there you have it. Now, this is a project. It includes a couple of custom objects. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push my source to my new scratch org. I need to specify data test in. Okay, and we'll see, we see that we got everything there. We got my custom application. We got all my page layouts. We got my custom fields and my custom objects. So everything is there that needs to be there. And what we'll do is we'll open that up and just have a look at it. So we'll say force org open, and we will specify data test in. All right, that opens up my browser. So we'll log right in, and we'll have a look at what's there. Let's go ahead and take a look and see. Okay, my application is here. I'll look at candidates, but when I look at the records, there's nothing there. That means we've got a little bit more work to do. So we're going to go back to the command line, and we're going to leverage the data that I just exported. Now I showed you those files. Here's where they come into play. I'm going to say sfdx force data, whoopsie, data tree import this time. And I'm going to say, take a look at my plan file. We put it here. What did I call it? Uh, I called it candidate underscore C. That's it. That's my plan file. So once you indicate that you've got your plan file, then you have to specify the actual name of the org, which we called data test in. We hit enter, and hopefully everything goes OK. OK, if you see output like this, where you actually see what appear to be Salesforce IDs being generated, that is a very, very, very good sign. So let's jump back to the browser. We're still on the list view of all, but there's nothing there, so I'll hit refresh. And now things look pretty good. We'll bring up Bob Barkley. And for some reason, the candidate history doesn't always load the first time. That seems to be something I'm experiencing in these scratch orgs. But when I refresh, everything is there. We'll go back. We'll look at one more record just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. We'll look at Phil Phillips and his candidate history isn't loading. It's very sad. We'll refresh and there it is. He's got four records. So that's it. So that is how you take data that exists in one org. You export it and import it into another. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.